Uh, today we're going to be creating an acid rain effect like this one here. As you can see, uh, thinking particles. I'm using think thinking particles to actually dent and pierce the kind of surface of this uh, metal cylinder. It's a pretty cool effect. You can use it for like many things, like um, I don't know, spaceship hull getting attacked, and um, you could use it for like some kind of acid erosion effect. You could use it for like um, I don't know bullet holes, you know anything you want. And um, this is the geometry is actually getting. This is actual geometry uh, that's changing here. So it's not like a displacement map or anything. Uh, so I'm gonna get started in Cinema 4D and show you how to do this. So I'll just stop that and I'll start Cinema 4D. I'm using version 14. Uh, it's the newest one. So I'll just start from scratch, it's easier to kind of follow that way and um, I'd say this is a kind of intermediate tutorial, it's actually probably beginner you could say, I don't know, it's pretty easy. Um, so I just need to remember how I did this. Okay, I'm going to start off by creating a cylinder, uh, plus x orientation. and. Um, might work in hidden line mode so I can see what I'm working with. Okay, I'm just going to add some uh, height segments into the cylinder uh, because we want some kind of geometry to use for the denting and um, it needs to be quite dense. So the driving force behind this effect is basically the collision modifier, this one. It's a very cool modifier, I'll show you what it does. So if I create a sphere, just shrink that down, and then go into the collision tab here, objects, colliders, you can actually add objects in here. And uh, if I move the cylinder, as you can see, it's actually bending the um, cylinder as if like it's kind of crushing it. I mean, this is this is a really cool effect. And it kind of absorbs it, and it's almost like meta balls, the meta balls type effect, but and it's so powerful. Um, I can actually make that sphere invisible to show you how the geometry gets deformed. Uh, except in this tutorial, we're not going to use a sphere, we're actually going to use thinking particles to affect the cylinder geometry. So I'm just going to create a really simple emitter. Uh, I'm just going to create a null, put it into object, uh, display it as a circle, and change the color here, make it like a red, just so I can see it. And I'm going to call this emit null. And then I might add the expresso just directly onto it. So I'm just going to create an expresso tag and uh, add the emit null node into the expresso panel. And uh, what we want to create is right click, new node, thinking particles, TP generator, P storm. P storm's got a emitter position node, and we want to bring out the emitter alignment node as well. So we've got those two nodes. And on the emit null, we're going to use global matrix and coordinates, global position, global position. So connect the global position to emitter position and global matrix to emitter alignment that takes care of rotation. So that's ready to, if we play, particles are emitting from the null position, which is what we want. We're just gonna rotate that 90 degrees, um, facing downwards. So if I hit play again, right, the particles are falling down. I'm just gonna move that up slightly. I might just, if you click on the P-Storm node, I might reduce the countdown to 25. It's quite big, so X size, Y size, just drop that down to 55. And the spread, X FOV and Y FOV field of, uh, I'm not sure what, what it's called, but it's basically like the angle it spreads at. I'm just gonna reduce that down to 22. Hit play again. So basically got a few particles falling on the cylinder, which is, and we're gonna use these particles to create, imagine they're like acid rain, so we're going to use these particles to dent this geometry. 
So we go to the collision tab. This is uh, if you go to the collision, click on the collision deformer and go to the colliders tab here. This is where you add the collision. Because the collision deformer is below the cylinder, it already knows like the cylinder is the parent object, and then you basically tell it here what's going to collide with it. So, except we've got a problem like how how can we add the particles? If we go to thinking the thinking particles tab and then try and add the group in, it doesn't let us. Like you can't. So like how are we going to get the particles in there? Basically, the trick is to use particle geometry. So if you go to simulate thinking particles particle geometry and then go to the thinking particles tab which is actually normally located under simulate thinking particles thinking particle settings and I've, I've just snapped it to the top right corner here because it's more convenient we can then drag and drop that all group into the particle geometry particle group which basically creates like an object we can um, use and it, this particle geometry basically just includes all the particles and now we can add that particle geometry into the colliders, collision deformer colliders section, and it goes right in there. It's accepted it, and if we hit play, nothing happens again. So the reason for this is we need to assign some geometry to these particles. So I'm just going to create a sphere, and then just a very simple sphere with maybe I don't know eight or maybe even four. Just reduce that down to four uh, segments. Oops. Just accidentally made the radius really small. I'm just going to move that up and out of the way. So this, this is what we're going to use as particle geometry. I might call it, I'll call it part sphere. Now we have to go back into the Espresso tab. I'm just going to move that up. And P Storm. First, we need to go to the P Storm node. And click the red section and click particle birth. Now right click new node expresso uh, where was it? Thinking particles, TP standard, P group. Just so as soon as the particles are born, they go into the old group, which is specified here. And that's just something to do. It's like good practice. Then we're gonna add another node, new node, thinking particles. Uh, TP standard TP standard P shape and this is where we can actually define some geometry so connect that to particle birth again and we can now drag and drop this particle sphere into the particle shape and it should use the geometry also actually we need to add new node expresso Sorry, new node, thinking particles, oops, uh, TP standard, scale, yeah, we need the scale node as well. So basically P group, P shape, and P scale, and then just connect that up to the particle birth as well. And P scale, was it P scale? Actually, you know, I can't remember. Sorry, I'm just going to have to, size, actually I think it might have been size, sorry. Yeah. So forget P scale, sorry, it's P size. And uh, here you can set the size of the particle. So now we're just gonna hit play and still nothing happens. And I think the reason is we might have to uh, make this part sphere. It's a parametric object. We might have to make it editable. And um, if we just click play again, see what happens, still nothing. Okay, I'm just going to have to go into the collision settings and have a look here. Should be working by this point. Uh, if you go into advanced, maybe increase the size in the advanced tab. Increase the steps to four. And what else do we, oh, re restore shape. We want to put this if you go to collision deformer object, restore shape, just put that all the way down to like one. Basically means that when something dents it, it's not gonna bounce back. If that's at a hundred, it's gonna like kind of it's basically gonna have elastic memory and pop back. So just put that back down to zero and it should um Oh look, now yep, yeah, we can see it kind of denting. 
if you watch an animation. So it's basically denting the geometry, which is what we wanted. Might just increase the speed of the P storm node, make it 150, so it's kind of kind of denting it a bit more and qu more quickly. So that's basically working now. So we can just kind of tweak the settings, collision, restore shape zero. If you go into the advanced tab, we can increase the size yet yeah, and see it's kind of denting it a lot more. I think maybe five was about right. So it seems to be. Um, and steps is basically like the number of calculations, like the higher you kind of increase the steps, the more slower it's going to slow the processing, it's going to slow the computer down. So uh, we, you want to put up the steps quite high, but not so high that you can't watch the viewport uh, animation. So like 16, it's getting quite slow now. I might just take it back to 6. And I think this uh, cylinder needs more geometry. The great thing about Cinema 4D is like everything's just flexible. Like we can just come in here and just add more geometry. Everything's non-linear, and um, it's just really cool. Um, so yeah, you can see it kind of denting. It's pretty cool. Except I want this to actually pierce. Like I want it to actually go create uh, holes in the hull. So to do that, I'm just going to cheat. I'm going to create a copy of the cylinder. Just get rid of the collision tab. I'm going to call this inner cylinder. And basically that's created an identical copy in the exact same place. Just reduce the radius down by one. So if the radius was 50 centimeters, make it 49 and increase the height. So it kind of protrudes out. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use a Boolean um, modifier, and that's under um, this uh, icon here. And if you go to Bool, it creates a Boolean. Now we're just going to add the cylinder and the inner cylinder in that Boolean uh, operation. Basically, what it's done now is it's subtracted the inner cylinder from the cylinder, so we've got this like hollow kind of shell. And now if we play back the animation, it's actually creating holes in the mesh because when the outer uh, shell dents inwards, it gets kind of subtracted, subtracted from that inner cylinder and it creates these kind of holes, which is a pretty cool effect. And these holes seem to be massive, um, so I'm just gonna try and reduce the size. So I can go back into my collision, collision modifier again and I can maybe reduce the size to see what happens. Sometimes you have to rewind and hit play again to see the change. And as you can see, it's kind of piercing the hull. So that's basically the kind of basic effect. You can play around with it, make your own version. Um, I think the particle size might be too big. So if I go to P size here and make this maybe four, uh, yeah, reduce the particle size slightly. Those holes are really big, and we can just keep increasing like the um, density of the mesh. So I'm just going to go to both cylinders and make height and rotation segments 80. I'm gonna play that back, and obviously it's going to slow down quite a bit. I just want to see what happens. Yeah, so as you can see now, it's creating like much smaller holes. Which is more consistent with like you know, um, like a meteor kind of attack, or I don't know, like gunshot kind of holes. And um, as you can see, it's completely that is real geometry. So basically, one way to um, solve this slowdown problem is to the collision deformer has this really cool cache uh, feature, and you can basically just go back to the beginning and hit enable the cache and calculate. Basically, it's just going to run through the animation once. Like that cache. It's quite a big cache, 20 megs. Now, hopefully, when I play this back, it should, yeah, it's running much quicker anyway. 